Hi students, so we are going to be talking about writing a narrative introduction as you guys have your stories and you've already put on a story mountain and everything, but now we want to kind of introduce the beginning of your story and how you need to write it. Um, so take a look at some of these story beginnings and I'll write them out for you guys. But it says one sunny day, one rainy afternoon, one dark night. This story is about... Hi, my name is, I woke up, got dressed, and had breakfast, and then I, so if you, like, heard these in a story that you were reading, would it draw you in? And I just want you to think about it for a second, and hopefully your answer is no, it wouldn't, because those just aren't very enticing, and they aren't something that makes you want to keep reading more. And so you're right, it was boring, you're a new, nice little um, little picture there for you guys. But yeah, those openings are not hooking to the reader. Whenever you write an introduction, you want to draw your audience in by using a lot of detail and doing it like with strategies that I'm about to teach you guys. But yeah, so how do you write a great beginning and how you do that? is you want the hook like I was talking about. So the purpose of your story beginning is to introduce the reader to the main characters, the story setting, and the conflict or purpose of the story action. More importantly, it should capture the reader's intention. So all this stuff going back to the story mountain is going to be found in the background. So you need to like let your readers know where they're at, like who they're with, and just like you want to bring in the reader by the detail that you use. And so I want you guys to take a look at this beginning. It's from the book The Haunting of Gabriel Ash and it's like a horror little story and with Halloween coming up and you guys writing about fear, that was perfect. But listen to this. And while you're doing it, think, does this draw me in and how? So it says, the two robber princes follow the trail of blood deeper into the thicket. Ahead, in the shadow of towering trees, the child's cries grew faint. A pale, violet mist seeped from the damp earth as the late hour secreted daylight away. So, did that draw you in? Like, how did it? And I want you to pause and, like, write down some of your thoughts. Like, how did that draw you in? So, if you did pause, I hope you wrote that it was, like, a mystery. Like, where are they? What is this trail of blood um what's this thicket like what are these shadows like you get to see all these unfinished thoughts that are drawing you in and that's what we want you guys to do with your introduction and so we have some strategies for you guys so there's four really good strategies you can use whenever you're trying to make an introduction and you can use multiple or you can just use one it's up to you but the first is you start it with an action. So you're putting your main character in the setting, doing something interesting and relevant to the story. So you ask yourself, what would you do? And so if we go back, the action here is that they're following this trail of blood, right? And then if we, the second little strategy is dialogue. Have your main character say something. Ask yourself, what would you say or exclaim? And in this one, they didn't use um dialogue but they didn't need to so but yeah so you just want to maybe it could be a character screaming maybe it could be a character um telling someone else to run or to hide right especially with fear um the third is a thought or a question so this is you show the main character's thoughts or raise a story question and you ask yourself what would you wonder or worry so back to this one we don't really see any thoughts, but um, I bet those robber were probably scared. And they were thinking, ah, like, should I follow this trail of blood? So um, whenever you do that one, just have, like, a feeling of the character, but explain it. Don't just say, they were scared. I want you to be like, oh, they had butterflies in their stomach, and it just felt like it was about to explode out of them. They were so frightened, okay? And then the fourth is a sound. Grab the reader's attention with the use of a sound. Ask yourself, what might you hear? So if we're going to go back again, what would we might have heard if they 
we were walking this trail of blood. We would have heard a splash or sticky, because blood's sticky, right? And maybe it would have just, like, suctioned to the ground they were walking on. They're in a thicket, so they might have heard leaves rustling. And so whenever you're using these strategies, you want to, like, really have your reader be able to envision what you're talking about, all right? And so, right, like it says at the bottom, be as descriptive as possible. All right, so for this, all these activities, I'm going to read what it says, and I want you to pause it and try to think of what strategies they're using here. And um, we'll talk, unpause it, and I'll tell you guys and talk about it. So the first one, it says, Leroy dropped down on his hands and knees and scrambled around, frantically trying to sift through the dirt that was piling up around the hole. So I want you to pause it here and figure out what um, strategies this author is using. So now that you've paused it, this author is using action, right? Leroy is dropping down to his knees. He's scrambling. He's frantic. Maybe even some thought could be said that he had there because we see that he is frantic, but it's not explicit thought. So the main one here is action, okay? Then the second example... Same thing, pause it after I read it, and then we'll talk about it. But it says, The wind began in the night. Arthur awoke to hear the tree branches scraping against the window, and the sound of sudden sheets of rain being pushed against the house. So pause it. Alright, um, if you thought about it, right here we see sound, right? So this author is talking about these tree branches scraping, which is terrifying at night. Um... And then you see the sound of sheets of rain. So there's scraping of windows. There's rain pattering on the house. Like you can envision it. And so that's the strategy that this author used. And then our next example, it says, Dread lay on Gilly's stomach like a dead fish on the beach. So pause it. And so the strategy here is you see some thought and some question, right? Gilly's stomach is just... Ah, like it doesn't feel good because he's he has a lot of dread a lot of stuff that is like piling up and it just feels heavy and hard right so we see this author is using um things that this um character's feeling and thinking and like questioning there's probably some regret right there in that sentence and we want to keep reading all right and i think this is the last one but it says, as soon as the wheels rattled on cobbled streets, Jimmy felt an immense sense of relief. Alright, so pause it. Alright, so here we kind of see an action, but we also see sound, right? And we see the thought. We have Jimmy and the relief he feels. We see the, co the wheels rattling on cobbled streets. It's loud, it's like clickery, clattery. But we also see some thought, right, and some sound and action because um, the wheels are rattling and Jimmy's with there, right? All right, and then, just kidding, this is the last one. So it says, anchor, shouted Captain Stubbins through his speaking trumpet, drop the anchor. So pause it. Okay, so this one is dialogue, right? We see the captain shouting this word. So if we first read this in a story, wouldn't we be, like, wondering? What is he dropping the anchor for? Like, why is he yelling? And so that's the strategy that this author uses. All right, so this one, we're going to try it together. And so we're going to start with some boring introductions, and then we're going to use some strategies. And I'm going to have you guys pause it again, and you guys are going to use strategies. Um, use each of them to find a different way to say it. So if the first line was, hi, my name is Kate. I'm going to tell you about my adventure exploring a haunted house. So pause it and come back. So if you came back, so if we said, instead of saying, hi, my name is Kate, I'm going to tell you about my adventure exploring a haunted house. What if we started with the action of she was running, she was out of breath, and um, she was like hiding or something. So all of these could like draw on our reader, right? If we use dialogue, maybe we can use something that she's saying to herself, like, um, 
I'm scared, um, hide, hide, hide to whoever might be with Kate, to herself, or be quiet, be quiet to herself as well, right? If we have thought or question, we can use the fact that Kate's probably scared, and instead of saying Kate was scared, maybe instead we could be like, she wondered why she was here in the first place. Why did she listen to her friends telling her that she should have gone to this haunted house? Right? Because she's questioning, why did she fall into that peer pressure? Like the story of the ravine. And then sound. If you're exploring a haunted house, there might be ghosts. So it could be crickety things. Like the other author that we read a few seconds ago, it could be a tree rattling on a um, window. Any sound that was creaky and cracky, right? Alright, so but do you see how we can so easily change such a boring introduction and something that's not super detailed? And use these little strategies to further them and make them a lot more um, exciting for our reader and want them to come into it. Good. I'm going to hope you said yes. But there's two more examples that are after this. And one of them says, this is a story about how I got chased by a coyote in the desert. Or one dark rainy night, I got locked out of my house. And... I want you guys to do those alone and use these strategies to practice because you're going to use these for your story as well, okay? But with all that said, now that you know the strategies and we've had some practice and um, we've got to even read some really good openings, um, it's your turn. And there's no pressure. You guys are going to crush it. Um, if you have any questions, email us or watch this PowerPoint again and good luck.